Two century makers in this game, Rory Burns and, of course, Steve Smith, and he's still going in the second innings, both doing it their own way. He talks about getting into that position. You wouldn't teach a kid to get into that position, but he didn't poo-poo that. He just said, look, whatever's natural. Well, he shouldn't really, because the two greatest cricketers, of, or statistically, him and Bradman, have a very similar method. If we've, I've looked at footage of Bradman over the years, tried to use it in that demo, was that Bradman's bat went out there and had a rotation and an arc on it that helped him very much access the ball. I think you can be a little bit too still. I think someone wrote a quote about him, was a good one, actually. His bat wafts around like a palm tree in a gale. It is wafting around, but it's giving him rhythm. And when it comes round, his positions that he gets in are absolutely spot on. And he doesn't care what he looks like. All he's worried about is the end result and the end result is magnificent. The fact that the whole country, cricketing country, are trying to work out how you get him out just shows where he is technically. Because how many times have we analysed people on this cart and gone, you know what, here you go, yeah. this is how you get him out. As of yet, we have not stood by this cart and said, this is how you get him out. They are searching in that England dressing room how to get him out. Well, we're not going to talk about how we're going to get him out because, as Nasser said, that's up to England. I'm just going to compare him with Bancroft, right? Because when you look at that visually as a still, Bancroft, you would say, is more orthodox than where Smith is, back face slightly shut, pointing out to whatever. We roll them on, though, where Bancroft gets into a real pickle. Smith, despite all the moving parts, gets into a far better position. So it is the end result. Well, I actually, then looking at that, that Bancroft has more moving parts than Smith, especially yeah. at the most crucial time of playing the ball. Smith is really still right behind that ball, but comes back in that arc to meet the ball, and Bancroft, at that crucial moment, his back foot's going, his back hip is coming through, his head position is all wrong, and that's the biggest difference. Technique is all about hitting the ball properly over and over again. So coaches around the world should probably start changing their mindset, because Bancroft looks contrived, Smith looks natural. And that is the whole point. You look at a, a, a young boy or girl, and the whole point of back leaf stances, whatever you do, is about hitting that ball properly time after time after time. It has to feel natural, it has to be relaxed, and it has to be repeatable. That's the thing he said, didn't he? When I asked him about that back lift, he said he wouldn't change anyone's. If it's not like his, don't change anyone's grip if it feels natural. Let a young boy and girl hold a bat. How does it feel natural? I guess the biggest part of this debate, actually, is for any coach out there later on, when do you change? I would say if there is something that keeps getting you out, you do have to look at it and change. So that is the biggest debate as to when you change. Because even Smith, having said that to me, Steve Smith, that I wouldn't change anything, just imagine he's batting in 2014 at the Wacker against England. If I can just go here now. He's batting at the Wacker against England. First innings, and he's standing on middle stump, right? Fairly orthodox. England are bumping in, men round the corner, Tremlett. He's going OK in Test Match cricket. He suddenly has a brainwave. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to stand outside leg. I'm going to waft my bat around. I'm going to shuffle across the stumps like he does now. Get outside off, and I'm going to play. That's a big change. That's not what Kumar did yesterday with Warner going from off stump to middle and leg. That's a massive change in technique. And you know, since that change in technique, he averages 100 plus in the first innings of Test Match cricket. It's, it's... Just hang on. When to change is one thing, but come on what to teach because everybody kids now want to come in i know at a test match they want to play these shots like joss butler so if you've got a kid coming up and they're interested in the game and they want to be involved what would you start with do you start with teaching them all these ramps which is fun and what they see all the t20 players play and get all the applause for or do you have to have some basic structure before you expand absolutely you need that basic structure the basic awareness of the game the understanding of how best you play and how best you meet the ball with the bat and once you have that, and that's what I term technique, I don't term technique having this really nice stance, everything in line and everything as the coaching manual says, it's about allowing that young kid to blossom in his own way. And once you have that base where you have a good defense, you can keep the dangerous deliveries out, you understand and you're in control of how you want to hit the ball and where you want to hit it. Then you expand and elaborate on that base and teach him all the reverse sweeps, the little dings, the paddles, whatever. Because if you take international cricket at the moment, you have Stephen Smith, you have Virat Kohli, you have Joe Root, three batsmen you will always talk about, especially in test cricket. In T20 cricket, you have Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli and a few others. 
they bat in different places. They have different roles, especially in the shorter formats of the game, but they all start with that base. They look very orthodox, but the execution of the stroke, they are creative and imaginative in the way they go about it. And that comes from having that really secure base that they can trust time after time. He's talking about young boys and girls. I'll ask you a question about a little bit later, first class cricket. Scores have been going down. Techniques have been diminishing. Do you think there has been, because of T20 cricket, because of picking your bat up high, they all pick it up high, they all have reasonably hard hands now, because you have to if you're going after the ball. Do you think there has been a drop off in technique in first class cricket because of the abundance of white ball cricket? I, I, I just think it's, it's, it's been a really stubborn mindset from a lot of coaches and a lot of players and they are really set in thinking this is the only way to do things. And I think when you look at a guy like Smith, who's working things out for himself, he's experimenting, he goes into the net and he hits a thousand balls. Why? It's because he wants to find the best way for each format to make him successful. If you're playing test cricket, you need to hit that amount of balls to really adjust from the shorter format to go into test cricket. You go into the white ball format, T20 or one day, you have to hit an equal number of balls, but with a different mindset, understanding that, okay, your first option is, okay, four, three, two, one in one day cricket. You'll add a six if it's T20 cricket. In test cricket, you come back down to defend, leave, ones, twos, bad ball, look to hit it. So it's, it's a case of understand, once you understand, what the greatest thing I took away from that interview, and Stephen Smith said, I'm a great fan of people working things out for themselves. And that is where the spoon feeding era needs to end and yeah. really responsibility given back to the players to actually think, imagine, create from that technical base. He, he made that change at the Wacker for himself. Yeah. No one told him that. No coach said, oh, do you know what about change? He made it for himself, which means, hey, he's comfortable with it. I'm just going to pick up one thing you said about teaching the kids, boys or girls, to start with to keep it out. They might say, I don't want to keep it out. And if I don't want to keep it out, I want to hit it out of the park. They would have been watching some of this last night up at Old Trafford, knots against Lancashire. They'll see Dan Christian managed to get, well, it's virtually the same ball when we roll the second part on Glenn Maxwell. He's hit that for six over backward square leg. Same ball here from Maxwell virtually. He's hit it over third man for six. So the mindset of children is changing. Yeah, see, you know, the mindset of a child, if you, if you give a child something to do, they're creative and they're imaginative. They'll find a completely different way to do something that you might try to teach them to. They say, no, 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 hold on, there's a different way to do it. You must never lose that creativity or that imagination that makes you unique. And this is just a great example of it. A certain stage of a match where you're forced to be attacking and two players to the same delivery take different options. It's just the way you think and it's not wrong. Both options are correct because the end result counts. And the pressure that's really put on a bowler, if one batsman can do both, at the same time, in terms of the same delivery, instead of two different batsmen, imagine what the ball is going yeah. through. Well, I can't do that. He's, I can't set a field. He hits me everywhere from the same position. It's that imagination and creativity that you've I, got to protect. I, I make it fun. With any kid, they want, especially nowadays with all the technology, they want to sit there on their iPads and various devices. They want fun. And also give them some kind of drive. Going back again to Steve Smith, there's a story of his dad in the garage. His dad put a sock up, like with all of us, sock up string, ball in sock, and Steve Smith went for hours and hours in that garage whacking this sock and made a hole in the garage. And if you go in Steve Smith's dad's garage now, there's a wooden plank at the top there because Smith absolutely demolished the roof. Just give them drills. It's not about coaching and over-coaching at a young and, age. And, and the fun element has to stay right throughout your career, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people grow weary and tired because that's coached out of them. Halfway through a first-class career, you get people saying, oh, I'm burnt out, it's because it's, it's, it's just not fun anymore. And that's a lot to do with having good man management coaches around you who allow you to do your own thing. Specifically, though, taking the game forward, let's have a look at Ben Stokes in this test match. And he's one of England's most technically accomplished batsmen in many ways. He's worked very hard at it. He's now hitting the ball extremely straight from a solid base. So from that position, or these positions, I'm going to jump out of that and go into the World Cup. He can then expand into these bigger shots like we saw in the World Cup. Absolutely, not just him. You take any good player around the world today, that's how they start. And it's applicable to any format of the game. And the greatest point here is that Ben Stokes is in total control of what he's doing. Everything he does is with a purpose. It's either to change a bowler's line and length, either to get him out of trouble into changing the bowler's mindset, and also in terms of situational games and trying to exploit and score the maximum of runs for his side. So as long as you're in control and you know what you're doing and practice and execution is with a purpose, I think you're fine. Make it fun, though. Whatever you're doing with kids, 
Don't get too... Well, support as a parent, but don't get too involved? Because no. you would have seen some of that at the no, schools that yeah, you go just, to. Just make it fun. Don't overcoach. Let them work it out for themselves. If it needs changing in the end, have a subtle word with them. But, you know, the two players we've seen get hundreds here, it's not what you look like, it's the end results that count. Burns and Smith.